Hey everybody, this is Try Dying to Live here, playing a little bit of Slideshow Space Program. Alright, not really actually a game, but we're going to do some slidey things. We're going to talk about Interplanetary Travel and Kerbal Space Program. Now this may seem impossible to you, it may seem like a huge challenge, and it is, but we're going to tackle it together. Alright, you and me together. So, grab your Earl Grey tea, I got mine, and we're going to jump right in here. Now, first off, uh, you guys have seen uh, moon landings, and I hope you understand some of the orbital, me orbital mechanics, because if you don't, uh, you're going to have a, uh, quite a bit of trouble with this. I mean, it's it's you can't just fly straight to a planet. It just does not work that way. You can fly straight to the moon sometimes, but you just can't fly straight to a planet. It's It's too much delta V. So what you're going to have to do is first understand how orbits work. If you don't understand orbits, go back, view one of the videos. I've done like three or four of them on the topic. Do that first. All right. So first, let's take care of this first picture here. All right. So so if you look at it, you can see uh, the blue dot represents Kerbin. Um, the spaceship, that green circle, is an orbit around Kerbin. And then, of course, there's the moon. And if you guys are traveling together, you'll know from from you know your experience and whatnot that in order to expand your orbit, you have to thrust forward, pushing your orbit out so that you can get to an intercept point. In the same way, if you are outside of the moon, like you have an orbit larger than that of the moon, um, you're going to have to do a retro burn, which means burn backwards, fire backwards, slow yourself down. And that will bring you in. And so you, if you understand these, these are the basic concepts of, of what's going down. Now, it, it may seem a little odd, but we'll just, just stick with me. Now, mind you, uh, I want to point out in this picture right here that uh, even though we're slowing down, even though we're burning, um, let's see, I guess it would be clockwise, we're still traveling counterclockwise. We're just slowing ourselves down, not turning ourselves around. Because the slower we go, the more, uh, the closer in our orbit will be in vice versa. And also notice that we're doing our burn opposite of what's being reacted. And so if we slow down, it's not going to bring us in immediately. It's going to bring us in on the other side of our orbit and, and in vice versa. When you burn outwards, when you're burning forward, when you're accelerating, you're not moving yourself out instantly, but the opposite side of your orbit's going to be affected. So that's very important. So if you can't do a moon landing, don't do, I mean you I'm not going to stop you, but I recommend trying a moon landing or a moon intercept or whatever first. It's way simpler because when you get into uh, actually the the difficult work of um, orbital or, or or interplanetary travel, things get a little little more hairy because you think about it, you're on a planet that's orbiting a sun, so you're in the sphere of influence of that planet. You got to leave that sphere of influence enter the sphere of influence of the sun, and then maneuver in that and make it to the planet. So that seems pretty tricky, and it is, but you realize, if you look at the picture, we're doing the exact same thing. You're already orbiting the sun. All right, You are orbiting the sun already. It's, you've already got that head start. You've already have most of that, uh, that, that uh, process done. You remember when you do a, a moon landing, you have to put your orbit around the planet, and then do your transfer burn. Here, you've already done that. All you have to do now is your transfer burn. Now, you have a, a few more steps than just that, but uh, it gives you that basic idea. So here, if we burn away from the planet, in front of the planet, away from it, it's going to make our orbit on the opposite side larger so that we can make an intercept, hopefully. That's the ideal. And so that's that's the concept right there. So you see this picture here? You got that? Right? So it's as simple as that. Accelerate forward in the direction the planet's traveling, and your orbit's going to grow. Now, in a similar situation, if you're trying to go to a planet inside, such as like a, a Venus-type planet, then what you have to do is you fire off the back of the planet, slowing yourself down. Now, mind you, we're still traveling in that counterclockwise direction, even though we fired towards clockwise, we're only slowing ourselves down. And the reason why is, say Kerbin is traveling at uh, 10 kilometers per second, and you uh, accelerate off the planet at 3 uh, kilometers per second, well, you're still traveling 7 kilometers per second. 
Make sense? You got that? So you're just slowing yourself down. You're going to still be traveling the same way, but you're going to come in so you can have that nice intercept there. Got it? Nice and simple. All right, so that's the easy part, all right? That easy concept. You're just doing orbital maneuver, all right? Now you actually have to burn off the planet, and that's important too, all right? In this picture right here, you can see that I've got this kind of twisted, um, I guess, uh, escape orbit, you might call it. Um, and this is sort of example of what you're going to need to do. Uh, you can't necessarily just fire straight off the planet. You probably could, but it's going to be a little... A uh, little, little more difficult, and also you get the added benefit of uh, kind of slingshotting around the planet. You get a little angle there, and it's going to help you quite a bit. And so, if you are um, uh, trying to go to say like a Mars where it's outside, uh, you want to increase your orbital size. You you want to get to an, uh, a planet beyond farther away from the sun is what I'm trying to say, you're going to have to travel with the direction of the of the of Kerbin with the planet. And that means that you actually, uh, I think I figured out the best way to, to do it is if you want to do it straight from the launch pad, just fast forward the time until uh, just after sun set. Because after sun set, you're going to be just moving away from the planet, or away from the sun, and that's the perfect time. You can launch, take your uh, trajectory towards 90 degrees, you get a, f a free uh, 30, or excuse me, 300 meters per second. You get 300 meters per second free of delta V to help spin you off the planet, head towards 90 degrees, and you're just going to kind of curve around the planet. Um, and then uh, basically what you're going to do is you're going to try to get yourself as straight as possible until you leave the sphere of influence. And then when you leave the sphere of influence of the sun, uh, you'll find yourself just orbiting kind of in a slightly um, slightly uh, elliptical orbit. It won't be totally round just like Kerbin's, uh, but it'll be slightly elliptical. And so what it's going to do is because you blasted this way forward, you're going to have a slightly larger orbit. So the, the act of just escaping the sphere of influence of Kerbin is going to give you a head start on your process. And so then you can leave the sphere of influence and you can you can uh, shoot yourself forward. Now you can also wait a little bit longer to launch and then go ahead and do all that delta V right away. So basically instead of uh, waiting till you leave the escape or, or escaping the sphere of influence, you do all that within the sphere of influence, and you just look a little farther out, and you got to time things out a little bit better. But it can be a lot easier, especially if you're beginning, to leave the sphere of influence of Kerbin, and then do all of your major um, orbital maneuvers, just because uh, the gravity of Kerbin is going to mess with you a little bit. And this is just going to take some practice; it'll be fun. And we're not we're not getting into like the uh, the exact science of it all, because you can actually look up the numbers. It'll tell you exactly when and how many degrees to burn and and to to do that all from. But you know, for the most part, you don't have to really worry about it. You're not going to be as efficient. But you know, if you don't want to mess around with all the numbers. Don't mess around with all the numbers. If you want to mess around with them, have fun. It just depends on what you want to do, how much you, you want to get into. If you want to really get into the math of things, or if you don't want to do the math uh, at all. But nonetheless, this is what you're going to do if you're going to go to, say, like a Mars analog, something beyond Kerbin. Now, if you're going to do something like a Venus analog, you're going to blast off just after sunrise, and that's going to curve you around the planet uh, backward, away from the planet. Even though you're still going to be traveling forward, it'll you'll leave. Kind of looks like you'll be going backwards, but you'll still be going forward, and that'll just slow you down. You do the same thing, and so it's just kind of the exact opposite. So if you're going towards, say, like a Mars analog, uh, wait until just after sunset, and if you go and burn towards 90 degrees, and if you're going towards like a like an inside planet, uh, then what you're going to do is wait until just after sunrise and burn then. And that's just for rough uh, estimation. You can get a lot more fine if you do the math and uh, kind of mess around. All right, so when to, when to burn? When do you burn? Um, there's a few ways to figure out when to burn. What I mean when to burn is I mean uh, the timing of everything. Like when do you wait till a planet is how many ever degrees in front or behind of Kerbin? So there's a few ways to do it. First way is to do the math. And there's a lot of uh, equations that you can use. Uh, it's basically 
Kepler's law, like his third law, and you can sort of figure it out and do the timing and all that stuff. And there's like math equations you can uh, use, and you know, if you want to do that, go ahead. However, there are already tools available for you to use, and basically, and they're going to get better and better. And basically, um, you can just basically say, okay, I want to go from Kerbin to the Mars analog. And you just type that in, and it'll be like, oh, you need to do this direction. And there'll probably be images even. You can say, okay, I just wait until the map looks like this, and then I'll do my, my, uh, you know, my interplanetary travel. Oh, excellent. And finally, so so that's probably going to be the that second one there, that use a tool is probably going to be the most uh, most common, the easiest way to get started. But you don't necessarily have to do that. I mean, you can go like way deep into the math. You can just kind of look at a picture. Or you can do my fun, my favorite thing, which is just trial and error because, you know, you just kind of play around and it, it doesn't really matter. And it's totally up to you. You know, I've, um, I've looked into some of the tools and things like that. Um, and I've also done some trial and error type things, and it's all fun. And so, uh, any of these, whatever you want to do is fine. I don't want to explain the math to you at all. I'll let you, if that's what you want to do, I'll leave that up to you. Um, I'll let you find your own tools. But I will talk to you a little bit about the trial and error method. And one thing you can do, um, which is super simple to do, which is when you go to do your interplanetary burn and you want to figure out when you're going to need to burn, what you do is just wait until the planet that you want to go to, uh, Kerbin and the Sun, are all lined up in a straight line. Then go ahead and do your interplanetary burn. You're going to miss, don't worry about it. And then when you get to your apoapsis, you know, that farthest place, that farthest place, or obviously your apoapsis needs to be the same uh, distance as as where the, the orbit of that planet you're going to is, obviously. But when you get to that, if you look at the paraapsis and you draw a line, kind of this, kind of this pie chart you see here, that's how far the planet is going to travel in the amount of time that it takes you to do that half a transfer orbit. Or that, I should say, yeah, well, it's half transfer orbit, that transfer orbit, whatever you want to call it. That that half circle, at half elliptical um, that you're going to take, that's going to be the same amount of time. So all you have to do is just say, okay, that's how far it's going to travel, and I'm just going to adjust it. Uh, so, for example, in this case, if this is what our, our result is, all I have to do is just wait until the planet's like this, and I can just do my burn then, and hopefully that'll time up. Now, mind you, when you go ahead and you do these burns and you do these um, uh, uh, trajectories and whatnot and these transfers and you're trying to, to nail it, you are doing huge amounts of uh, distance and you're still hitting very, very small targets. The sphere of influence of a planet no doubt is much larger than that of the moon. No doubt it's much larger. But the distance you'll travel means that the timing could be uh, just a little bit off. And so some of the things you can do if you just find yourself off a little bit is before you do your uh, burn, uh, your, your interplanetary burn, just do a quick save, try it again, whoop, we missed, back up, try it again, and so on and so forth. So you can kind of save some time there. Uh, but also, if you notice you're, you know, say you're kind of getting a little close there, you can do a few things. So, for example, say you are, uh, you're ahead of the planet. Okay, you're going to come in. You're ahead of the planet. It's obviously, obviously, you're not going to make it. When you're at your, um, you're close to your apoapsis. You're traveling at the slowest rate um, of any time in your orbit. So one, and and the, so you're actually traveling slower than the planet. So what you need to do is you want to hang out there a little longer. You might think, well, maybe I speed up and make my orbit bigger, uh, but it's not going to help you out because, you know, you got to stay slow. Uh, so one of the things you can do is actually point your ship away from the sun and do a burn, and that's going to pull your orbit, kind of shift it to the side a little bit there, and hopefully gives gives you some uh, little extra uh, time, and maybe maybe without using up all your fuel, you'll be able to make it. You know, it's just going to depend on how far off you are. Uh, now, mind you, these aren't uh, very efficient um, maneuvers. All right, if you if you miss, you're not going to have you know you're not going to have a perfect you know. Um, 
trip where you just, you know, used exactly the perfect right amount of fuel and, you know, you land with a drop or two left in your tanks. You're not going to have one of those situations. You're, you're going to have to need some extra fuel or you're going to run out or whatever. But it lets you kind of fudge things a little bit, kind of push things back. And so that's one thing you can do. And if you're, uh, if you find yourself kind of in an opposite situation, you can do an opposite thing where you um, go ahead and uh, you can you can burn toward uh, the sun, which is going to kind of pull your orbit back, and that's just going to depend on how our things are. And like I said before, you also depends on um, how far you are on uh, what's going on, because if you if you find yourself um, you know, kind of in a bad situation and you're way off, you know, you're traveling at such big speeds uh, that you're going to have to f have difficulty finding enough fuel and Delta V in a ship that's already left Kerbin and flown halfway across the solar system. Uh, so that's that's kind of a, a big important thing you have to be aware of. And so uh, you can sort of fudge it. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. So that's a couple things you can do to help yourself kind of save you in a bad situation. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. Hopefully you guys learned some stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to keep up with me, if you have any questions for me, catch me on my Twitter, at try dying to live. And you might say, why on Twitter? Because the Twitter is the one place you're actually guaranteed to always get me uh, because my Twitter goes straight to my cell phone. So if you actually at tweet me at tweet me at try dying to live right now I would actually get a text on my cell phone and you'd be like hey man I didn't understand any of that video do it again and and I would I would do it again but anyways uh, version 17 is coming up soon I'm super excited I hope you are too and good luck to you guys because we're all gonna need it hey thanks guys